Hi everyone, uh, we are in Alamo, California in the Bay Area in Northern California and we are the proud owners of two really big sulcata tortoises. Um, and the reason I'm making this video is because we recently spent a couple weeks working on a night shelter and winter shelter for them in an efforts to try to keep these guys outside year round, um, which will definitely come with more challenges, but we think we have a really good system going. And um, before starting this project, I found that there just weren't too many online resources on how to make these um, evening shelters for these tortoises um, in cooler climates so I just wanted to make a video and kind of get this information out to show what has worked for us what we've done and um, just so other sulcata owners in cooler climates uh, to get some ideas um, so this is Shelly one of our big sulcatas uh, we got her when she was only a couple weeks old uh, she was about the size of a ping-pong ball and now she's about 100 pounds, and that was uh, 20 years ago um, or so. And uh, here she is out in our orchard, um, grazing away on some of the fresh grass shoots that have just come up after the recent rain. And uh, she seems to be enjoying herself. Right, Shelly? You're a good girl. And we'll, let her, and we'll let her bask and do her thing. And I'll show you where we're keeping our other tortoise for the day. And. Um, Give you a tour of the house. So Tank is our other tortoise and he is a male um, and they spend a lot of time together without any problems but uh, lately we've noticed that he kind of bullies her a little bit and he's been pushing her around uh, so I just like to have them have a couple hours a day where they um, can be separate and just have some alone tortoise time. So this is our outdoor enclosure here. Um, <laughs> the, the Coke cans there to prevent water from going down those um, open pipes. Um, but we've uh, put up the structure a couple years ago, um, but the inclusion of this house that we recently put together will, um, will mean that they can hopefully stay outside year round and they're now big and tough enough to do that. And I think it's much healthier for them. So let's go take a look what we have in here. We have a bowl of um, Timothy hay, one of their favorite foods. They're grassland tortoises, so they should be eating primarily grass. Um, we also have a box here just for enrichment. Tank likes to push boxes around, so I thought I'd give him a box today. And here's Tank. Hey, Tank. He looks very comfortable. Um, he's the same age as Shelly, about a, a 20 years, and he is quite a bit bigger than her. He's around 120 pounds. Um, really strong tortoise and a uh, pretty formidable little bulldozer and he's just uh, hanging out in the shade but this is the house that we've built it is a converted rubbermaid shed uh, typically these sheds are bought to house um, bicycles and that kind of stuff to store in your yard but what we did was we cut a big hole in it and made it a tortoise palace so as you can see here we cut a quite a large hole here um, so they can easily get in and out um, we also installed these uh, clear flaps. It's uh, it's from Home Depot, and it's just carpet runner, um, and it's just a couple couple bucks a foot. Um, so it made it a really good uh, material to put on our house. Um, it's it's plastic, so it's waterproof, and um, we did have to remove some nubbins that they put on there uh, that are used to grip onto carpet. But we just did that with a chisel, and it was uh, no problem. It was kind of a pain, but. Um, I think they do make runner without those little bumps, um, so maybe next time we'll do it that way. But for now, it was it worked really well. Um, and let's take a look at our door. It just swings open like that, and we have uh, the flaps securely placed in there. So this is the inside of the house. We have a few things going on in here. Um, the substrate that I use is just more Timothy hay. Um, I think it gives it a more homey feel. Uh, plus I noticed they kind of like to dig in it. So I think it gives them a, a sense of security. Um, they are burrowing tortoises in the wild. They would spend a lot of time underground, um, but in captivity, they, they don't get that opportunity as much. Um, so I feel like this just kind of fills that, um, that desire to, to be underground. They kind of bury their faces in it. And I think they, they find security in that. Um, so at the bottom of this um, is our foundation here. So we just put up some um, 
cement blocks as a foundation to keep it rised off the ground by a couple inches. Uh, we are in California, so we are in a drought, but if we do get rain, we wanna make sure that the water stays out of this house. So that foundation is there to, to prevent that. And because our tortoises, you know, they have short legs, we installed a step, which is really just a piece of wood here. Um, and it's only about two inches tall, but when you're a tortoise, that makes a big difference. So it's nice, it's just a little gradual step up and they can go into their home. Uh, so let's take a look at what we did insulation wise. Um, the biggest challenge, oh, the tank's using the house right now. The biggest challenge is uh, keeping it well insulated and warm during the winter. So we took a few steps um, to do that. On the inside, we have this really thick insulation. Again, we got it at Home Depot. You can see it's a little bit little of an over an inch thick. Um, and this will just help keep the heat in, keep the cold out. And uh, we have a bunch of lights that I'll get into in a minute um, and that uh, warm up the house and this insulation keeps it warm. Um, so the door, as you can see, doesn't have a layer of this thick insulation. So what we did was we injected it with um, a canned foam insulation. You can see it kind of coming out here um, and on the sides here, this yellow material, we just um, shot it in all the openings. And then once it dried, we sawed it off um, with an X-Acto knife you can see here the runner so um, this door also has loose insulation crammed in there as well so even though it doesn't look like it's insulating um, it has a lot of things inside of it that will keep uh, keep the door from leaking heat uh, so tank looks like he's comfortable um, so in addition to the insulation in here um, we put up these wooden bumpers um, tortoises are very rough and they don't really understand the concept of going around things they just kind of keep pushing forward until something happens or doesn't happen until they give up so it was really important to put up this wood to prevent them from um, you know punching any holes into the insulation because it is like still it's a foam and uh, even worse they could poke holes in it and then eat the pieces that fall off because they're, they're really curious and we love them but they're just not super smart all the time hey tank Good boy, a very sweet tortoise. Um, so underneath this wooden, uh, this wooden bumper, we have a two by four in there as well uh, for when we want to hose out the enclosure or if some, or if they go to the bathroom in there. Uh, we just don't want moisture to come in contact with this foam uh, insulation because it is porous and it could be pretty disgusting if it was like soaked in urine. Um, so let's take a look at the heating system in here. That's really the most important part of setting up an enclosure like this. So we have a total of six different heating sources on, in here. Um, the first one you can't see, it's underneath the Timothy hay, but it's a large pig blanket. So it's basically a large heating pad that's built tough enough and encased in plastic to withstand uh, a beating from the tortoises. Um, we have unfortunately gone through a lot because they tend to rip the cords off of them while they're digging around in here. So our solution to that was putting this white uh, tube, PVC tube, and putting the cord in there so it prevents them from knocking it um, off the pad. But it's a great heat source and it gets it nice and warm down in the hay. Uh, so the other things that we have going here are we have a whole cast of lights that go on during the day and versus during the night. Um, so for daylights, we'll go talk about those first, we have a 150 watt spotlight. It has UV light in it and it gives it a nice basking temperature of about 95 to 100 degrees. Um, so they can choose to go um, bask if they need to at any time. Um, and then for the rest of the enclosure, it's basically a temperature gradient. So they have a lot of choice of where they want to sit and how, how long. Um, in addition to that, we also have a 36 inch fluorescent bulb that spans across here. Um, and this is another UV, UVB light. This is really important for metabolic growth. Um, our tortoises have slight amounts of pyramiding, but having a good light and a good food source is really key in keeping that pyramiding uh, as reduced as much as possible and uh, gives them a lot of good healthy growth in their bones as well. Um, and just for general healthy reptiles. Uh, so that is the number of lights that go on during the day. Again, it's our spotlight and the UV fluorescent tube. Um, and then for the nighttime, uh, a different cast of things go on. So again, our heating pad that's down there will go on during the evening. Um, and then we also have a 100 watt, um, soon to be 250 watt ceramic 
heater. So this is a really great heat source because these bulbs last a really long time compared to, compared to normal bulbs, um, and it just heats up without um, emitting any light as well. So it's just a really nice all around evening, uh, night heat source. In addition to that, we also have a 50 watt blue light up there. It's a, it's a reptile night light and all it does is throw out a little blue light as well as, um, some heat, not a ton though, but it does keep it, keep this box a little bit warmer and it makes it a lot easier when we check on them in the evening, uh, to see them rather than bringing a flashlight and waking them up. Uh, so that's a really nice, um, nice light as well. And we have everything plugged in and hooked up off the ground. Cause again, tortoises are really good at getting themselves into trouble and getting tangled up. And we have it all hooked up to this, uh, timer system here. So we have certain lights going off during the day and during the night. Um, so it takes a lot of the work out. We don't have to flip any switches. It does automatically. Uh, additionally, we have put in a thermometer system. So this white thing hanging off the wall is a remote thermometer. And um, it's great because it just constantly reads the temperature as well as reads highs and lows as well. So I can track the temperature and then that temperature is sent off to a digital readout in the house. So I can just always keep an eye on the temperature to make sure that everything is working smoothly out here without actually coming out here, opening the door and waving my hands in here to kind of get an idea of what the temperature is like. Um, but so far the tortoises seem to really be enjoying it. Um, and uh, some tortoises apparently need some time to acclimate and adjust to using a house like this. Ours maybe I guess are smarter than the average tortoise maybe and uh, they figured it out right away on day one. They used the door without any coaching or anything. So I guess we're, we're quite proud of them um, in a way. But uh, yeah, so I hope this uh, video helps someone out there uh, with their sulcatas. Uh, when we got them when they were little, we had no idea how fast the 20 years would pass till we have to figure out these, these big um, heating solutions. But once we put down the effort to make a house like this, it seems like everything's gotten a lot easier. And um, it is a work in progress, but I think we're off to a great start. So happy reptile keeping everybody. And uh, Tank says goodbye too. Bye.